Hi, I'm Lauren Whiteside Mann and I'm the owner of Southern Bloom Press. I'm going to show you all today how simple it is to take items from your own backyard and make your own works of art. Anemones are a great flower to use because they are very flat. I like to use an X-Acto knife. Um, that's able to take out kind of the meaty center of it. I just take a cut down the center and another one down the middle. And if you have some blunt tweezers, you can easily just scoop those right out. So I'm gonna remove the whole center and then you'll just take some scissors and you'll cut as close as you can to the tip of the flower. Make sure you lay them flat face down. You wanna give yourself enough room in between each bloom. So this one doesn't have a thick center, so I can go ahead and cut this one as is. I like to pull these little leaves off and they make fun things to work in, into designs. Ideally what you would do is you would fill up this whole page with the anemones face down. I like to use a traditional wooden flower press, so that's what I'm using here today. I like to really use watercolor paper that artists would use because you're able to reuse that a lot. After you complete the whole page, you then take the other one and place it on top of the flowers, and then you'll take your cardboard piece and place that on top. And it's just layer of paper, flowers, paper, cardboard. Another thing that I love to use would be Monstera leaves. These are wonderful because they're so large, so it's almost like you have a design without even having to try. These are thicker, there we go. Another great item to press would be ferns. Um, I clipped some of these tiger fern branches off this morning from our hanging planters. You can go ahead and just lay these flat down. We'll do the same thing again and take your paper and then you'll put your cardboard. And the great thing about hydrangeas is that these are kind of the giant purplish blue hydrangeas. Um, they're easier to work with when you're pressing and they're also easier to work with when you're designing. As you'll notice, you'll kind of see little balls on the top part of the flower. I like to remove those and you can do so just by rubbing your hand, your thumb across it. And then I like to just place them face down and trim. So then after you get done, you'll fill up this whole sheet of the petals and you'll have them all facing down. It's very tempting, but do not open up the press. Um, if you can wait, just wait four weeks and that's a good rule of thumb. Wooden presses are great. They use straps that go across them. If you do not have a traditional wooden flower press on hand, you can easily use an old telephone book or just a large old book that doesn't have any glossy pages. Once you have everything pressed and ready to go, then you can kind of start your design process. Once you press the Monstera leaves that we did earlier, they'll come out. You'll notice they're not that bright green, but it's kind of a lighter brown color. I like to use the tacky glue. Um, that way it gives you a little bit of movement when you're designing things. Just make sure it's acid free, maybe from your local craft store. So you're just gonna put this along the line of the leaf and if you have some disposable paint brushes you could use those too um, but I wouldn't use anything that's expensive because you're just gonna mess them up place it on your paper and hold it in place I like to use watercolor paper again for my designs I feel like it holds the glue a little bit better and that's a simple design I love to do kind of 8x8 designs as well. I feel like you're able to kind of mix them up and make a gallery wall out of them. Um, if you get some dark anemones, just remember, if they're red or purple, they're going to really darken as they dry out. If we were using something like hydrangeas, you'd want to use some rubber cement. We all remember that from like elementary school. Um, you can use that because it's not going to change the pH level of the hydrangea. But for all other flowers, you can use the regular tacky acid-free glue. Don't be afraid to kind of mix it up, layer things, and just see what flowers and colors really call out to you. I love kind of the bright, bolder colors in all of my designs. Then you'll just take a little dab of your glue. I like to just put it in the center 
because once you have it down, if you do not glue the, um, the edges of the petals, that allows you to kind of tuck other flowers and leaves in. Now I have this pink ranunculus that pressed really well. So I'm gonna add that in. And you just put a little dab of glue on the back of that with the toothpick. And then since this isn't glued down, the little outside leaves, I like to tuck those in. So once you get done, something simple like this, but it'll kind of bring um, some bright colors into your home or office.